Representative Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the passage of the Bipartisan CHIPS and Science Act put the largest investment in American industrial policy in the past 50 years. It includes vast new resources to support entrepreneurship and technology and manufacturing with an ambition of leaving no American behind. Um, but this is because many Americans have been left behind in science and technology. Uh, per U.S. Census Bureau, 90% of manufacturing firms are white-owned, 4.6% are Hispanic-owned, 4.5% are Asian-owned, and less than 1% are black-owned. Within that small fraction, those black-owned manufacturing firms are more likely to be less than three years old. CHIPS and Science Act looks to supersize scientific investment and also promises new resources and policies uh, to allow historically black colleges and universities um, and other minority serving institutions to participate equitably and genuinely in this research funding and in the entrepreneurship of wealth creation. Um, understanding that innovation can often come from small companies that large companies uh, then later buy. How can we ensure that equitable access to entrepreneurship and science and technology includes those small black businesses and other small businesses from marginalized communities? Um, Ms. Wentz-Smith. Th thank you for that question, Congresswoman. I think you've raised, you know, an incredibly important issue for our country because Actually, one of our members at the council, Michael Crow, president of Arizona State, said this, so I always give him credit. If you think of our nation as a baseball team, we're only fielding less than 10% of the players whenever we participate in the game. And so we have to, as a nation, do everything we can to bring our entire population into the innovation economy of the future. In terms of underrepresented ethnic groups, populations, one of the things I think that's very critical and it's underway is to integrate, for instance, our historically black colleges and universities into large-scale research activities. We have a number of the presidents of these institutions in the council. They have capability to come in and participate in an advanced project in quantum at another institution. That expands and builds up the capability. In terms of the small businesses, we obviously have, you know, the Small Business Administration financing, but I think that one of the gaps, again, is on this place-based innovation. I am very excited about what's going on in some of our universities. For instance, I'll mention one, South Dakota State University. I just recently learned from the president that by the time you graduate, you will have, from South Dakota, Dakota State University, all the capabilities for the top clearances to work in cybersecurity. So we need to look at all these universities and ensure that we have a path for all our citizens. And I want to just mention on the issue of the labor unions, and I was whispering this to, to Dr. Budell, the pipe fitters and plumbers union is still at NIF. They built NIF. They operate NIF. These are highly skilled workers. And having this collaboration between our unions and our companies is very, very critical to this strategy of building out a very diverse, inclusive economy. Thank you. Um, in my home district, um, Pittsburgh, we've been turning the corner from uh, more uh, manufacturing industries, uh, steel, to a tech hub, an innovation hub. Uh, one such uh, business that we have in Pittsburgh is, is a company called Astrobotics. It's an employee-owned company uh, with the goal of making unmanned space missions feasible and more affordable uh, for science. Um, Dr. Budell, Astrobotics is, is, is actively competing with Lockheed, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos. Uh, space exploration and advancement of technology and science should not be limited to billionaires. So what steps do you believe we can take to ensure that organizations like Astrobotics are not outliers in science and technology? Thank you very much for the question. It's a very important one. Um, when we think about partnering with industry, we think about it in different tiers. So we commercialize technologies, meaning we spin out uh, technologies. So we work with startup companies. We work with small and medium-sized companies. We bring them to the laboratory so that they can have access in partnership with our researchers to our facilities and capabilities to help increase their capacity to compete. And then we work with large business um, as that may be appropriate to the technology that we're talking about. So we have active programs uh, in ensuring that our capabilities are well understood in the broader community and that we have mechanisms in place where we can bring small and medium-sized companies to bear. I'll cite two examples. One, we have a program for the application of high-performance computing in manufacturing and other, other areas. 
uh, where companies can apply to work with our researchers to have access to our machines and our simulation tools. And a second, we have an added advanced manufacturing laboratory where we have laboratory space specifically designed to bring academic and business partners into the facility to work with our researchers again to advance their technologies and enhance their competitive prospects. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I go back. The gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes uh, Dr. Babin from behind the pine curtain. That's East Texas. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ranking Member Bonamici, for organizing this incredibly important conversation that we're having.